So today in 2900, we're going to continue with where we left off last time. That is, we're going to look at CMOS logic design examples. And like I said last lecture, I've changed the syllabus around a little bit. That is, we're covering chapter 3 first and then getting back into chapter 2 and Boolean algebra because not only for lab 0, which is you have lab this week, but this stuff is a little difficult. right? And speaking about difficult, I've posted your second extra credit online. Now, the way the extra credit works, like I said right before lecture started and now for people looking at the video, um, this will get recorded. So this extra credit is actually due by 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time on Mondays. Okay, The very next day, I'll post, like, I don't know when, when I have time to record it. I'll post the solution video for this and post it on the YouTube channel for the course. I don't have time to go over it in lecture, uh, but if I do have time, I'll go over it. Right, And also the solution will contain, for example, if you look at the second extra credit problem, you can't really uh, do this yet. You can definitely do this after next lecture. right? So this is a MOSFET circuit. So this will involve its extra credit because it will involve ideas from 2050, okay? very simple ideas, and also the MOSFET equations. Okay? The thing is, I guess my Adobe Reader is not, I didn't see these lines before, but print them out and let me know if you still see these like lines here. But uh, basically, the idea behind this problem is the MOSFET ID versus VDS and VGS characteristic. It's nonlinear. And this shows you that we'll talk about this later, like I said, next lecture in more detail. This is the analog model of the MOSFET. And unlike a resistor, like we talked about last time, a transistor is a transfer resistor. So there are actually two voltages. The current through the transistor, excuse me, is a function of two voltages. One, the gate to source voltage, and the other, the drain to source voltage, right? So in effect, if you were to plot the IV characteristic of a MOSFET, it's actually a three-dimensional plot. Current on the z-axis and VGS and VDS on the x and y-axis, for example, right? But people don't usually plot it like that. They plot it as a parametric plot, and we'll talk about it again next lecture. The whole point of the extra credit is for you to think a little bit more than what we are talking about in the course. So a note is, again, please read chapter 3. Okay. I believe chapter 3 is, um, I don't have the book with me, put a question mark. I think chapter 3 is your CMOS and transistor stuff. So actually, since we have time, let me check that because it's in the syllabus. Syllabus, let's see what it says. No, actually, it is still chapter. No, it is chapter three. Never mind. All right, so I was right. There's no question mark here. Okay. So please read chapter three, and then we'll get back into chapter two. But recall where we stopped. We stopped here. Okay, so we had a resistor. So this is VDD, transistor. Again, I'll start using this symbol. Well, actually, no. I won't use it. I won't confuse you. So let's just leave this. This is the digital symbol for an NMOS, if you will. It's called as M1. Here is Y. Here is X. And we said that, so basically, recall again, when X is 0, 0 volts, the MOSFET is off, okay? Or the NMOS is off. So Y gets pulled up to 1, which is VDD. And when X is 1, the transistor is on, and Y gets pulled to 0, OK? Now, what was the issue with this circuit, if you recall from last lecture? What was the problem with this circuit? Power dissipation, right? So the issue, if you will, in red, so the issue is static power dissipation is not zero. What do I mean by static power dissipation? That means if X is logic one, okay, the MOSFET is on, but so there is basically power dissipated in this resistor, right? Because remember last time we were saying that power associated with the MOSFET is VDS. So again, let's mark the gate 
drain and source. So the power with the N mass, let me write it down here. So if this is IDS, power associated with the N mass is what? VDS, the drain to source voltage times IDS, okay? So according to the passive sign convention, and this is approximately zero, right? Because when the MOSFET is on, it's actually very low voltage drop across this, then only Y will get pulled to ground, yes? So this is not really the issue. The issue is this fellow. That's why I have like put it in like a uh, little dotted circle, okay? So what we want is a device. So the solution which we come up with or the engineers came up with in the 1970s is a device that is on for x equals zero input, okay? And off for x equals one, all right? So in other words, if this resistor magically turned off when x equals one, then no current will flow, yes? For x equals zero, it really doesn't matter if it turned on or off because the N MOS is off, right? But turns out the device turns on for x equals one. Sorry, x equals zero, okay? So such a device is called the PMOS, okay? So this device is the PMOS, and it's so called because the majority carriers are holes. And holes are not really positive charges, okay? They act like positive charges, but they are defined as absence of electron. So that's how we should define it as. There's no electron, it's a hole, right? So when an electron, for example, in a crystal lattice, whatever, semiconductor lattice, um, not crystal lattice, semiconductor lattice, moves from left to right, the hole moves from right to left, yes? Opposite to the direction of electron. So if you think about it, let's say here is an electron. Okay, so here is a crystal lattice. Again, this is semiconductor theory. You really don't need to know this in detail. But let's say an electron jumps from here to here, correct? So what happens equivalently is, let's say the electron's here, the hole is moving this way, right? Yes? So it's, the hole is not a positive charge. Don't think about it. They actually move much slower than electrons. They actually move twice Electrons move twice as fast as holes, okay? And that's reflected, and we'll talk about this in a, again, next lecture, but I want to show this to you. That's reflected in this Kn parameter. It's called, um, well, we'll talk about what it's called, but this is 60 microamp per volt squared for an equivalent PMOS transistor. This probably be 30, right? It's called, it's related to what is called mobility. Right? You may have heard of it in physics, if you took the semiconductor physics course, but anyway. So getting back into here, so how does a PMOS work? So here is the symbol for a PMOS. Notice it's like a, it's a little bubble, right? And this stands for NOT, and we'll talk about it shortly, okay? Remember the NOT gate? But this is shorthand for NOT, but the whole point this is here is, it's telling you this is the complement of the NMOS. That's how it's called. So what do you think this terminal is called of the PMOS? This terminal. The gate, this doesn't change. But let's be careful. If current flows like this, where is the source and where is the drain for the P mass? So be careful. Where's the source? So one is, I would say it up or down. So why is it up? It's actually up. Why is it up? Why? Yes, but why? Why in the P mass from source to drain, not drain to source? Okay, all right. No, not really. Like it's that. What are the majority carriers? Yes. Yeah. So this, the majority carrier here in this device are not electrons. Okay, they're holes. So holes move in the opposite direction of electrons. So they move in the direction of current. Right. So the rule of thumb is, it's not 
I say rule of thumb because I haven't really proved anything. Right, the semiconductor physics behind transistors takes up an entire course. I think it's thirty-one eleven. Right, it's or I think so. I don't remember. Right, so it's very detailed. If you want a really good reference, and I can give it to you. Right? But the rule of thumb is current flows from source to drain in PMOS. That's why it's a rule of thumb in the sense we're not proving it. Current flows from drain to source in NMOS. Okay? So, all right, this is all fine and dandy. So, how does this help? So, let's look at our first example. So, actually, let me do this on the next page. So, we have plenty of room. All right, so here is our NMOS. Okay? So I'm going to replace my resistor with a PMOS. Something like that. Okay, here is VDD. Okay? And this is my X. And this is my Y. The question is, what kind of logic gate do I get? Okay? Now going back to your notes, when you see a transistor circuit, what's the first step? Which I tell you people always skip, which you shouldn't skip. Huh? Label drain source. Okay, never skip that. And gate, but gate is kind of obvious. This is the gate. Okay? So to get the drain and source, you got to figure out which way the current flows in the circuit. Correct? So which way does the current flow the circuit? Recall that this is basically like a capacitor. There's no current in here okay, for these FETs. So which way does the current flow here? Which way does it flow? Top to where? Yeah, so from where to where? So you got to tell me where's the drain, where's the source of all these transistors. So here's ground. VDD is positive. So which way does the current flow? Ding, 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 ding. There's no current in here. This current is zero amps. This doesn't really matter. So what matters is this. Good. Okay, so these two elements at this terminal are in series, right? So the current has to flow. Like if you apply KCL at this node, they can't flow in opposite directions, right? So, but looking at the fact that VDD is positive and this is ground should tell you which way the current should flow according to convention. Okay. Top to bottom. So, given this, this is ID. That's how it's abbreviated. It's not abbreviated IDS. Okay. Actually, some people might abbreviate it as IDS. ID. So, where is the source and where is the drain of the P mass? So, where is the source? Is this the source? Where is it? VDD is source. Okay. Source drain, and then what? Where is the drain and source of the PMOS? Oh, the NMOS, sorry. Drain is at Y. This is source. Yes? So if you want, let's call this P, P, N, N. Okay. Perfect world. That's a D. Okay? So a couple of points to note. So, note, PMOS and NMOS, this is called CMOS, complementary metal oxide semiconductor. That's, this is CMOS technology. Okay. When it came about in the mid-70s, it just blew everything else out of the water, mid-70s, late-80s. Sorry, mid-70s, late-70s, early-80s. Okay. Yeah, question? Yeah, which is equal to the current going into the NMOS. Because there's no current in here. That's why. If this was a BJT, that's not true. Because there'll be a current coming in here called the base current. Okay? That's one of the other reasons why BJTs lost popularity for digital electronics. But BJTs, because they they are not, I mean, this capacitance here, the, the bipolar transistor works completely different physics. Right? It can switch really fast. Because you don't have to charge and discharge caps. So for really high frequency, high current applications, these BJDs are very important. 
it's not like BJDs are not important, but uh, CMOS logic is it's MOS. Okay. So PMOS and NMOS are connected at drain. Okay. Their source terminals are not really connected. Second, PMOS is pull up network. That's the topology of CMOS, and NMOS is pull down network. Okay, these are two points you should remember. And you, you, don't have to, you should never memorize anything. All right? You should understand why it's coming, and then do enough problems so it becomes second nature in your area of interest. Like I always say, there is no such thing as a formula. Right? There are only concepts that lead to mathematical expressions that become formula in your head after enough practice. Okay? For example, I never memorize this equation. Right? So for one way to look at this equation, if you look at this fellow, is what's the units on the left-hand side? Amps. So the units of this better be amps, correct? This is the width and the length of the transistor. What are the units of W over L? No, dimensionless. This is gone. What are the units of this? This little expression in parentheses. Volts. What are the units of this? So what are the units of the product? So what are the units of K and prime? What would it better be? No, it's not one over whole squared. Huh? Amps over whole squared. See that? So there are reasons why it is like this. Right? When you look at transistor physics, let's say you want to go into VLSI. Okay? You should know this don't code. Right? Nobody in an interview will ask you this. They'll assume you know this. So that's how you like understand this stuff. You figure out what you're interested in and do enough practice. You're motivated to do it until all this becomes like second nature. So two points, right? PMOS and NMOS are connected to the drains. PMOS is pull up. And the reason why PMOS became pull up is, in my opinion, and I don't know the logical reason, it's history, right? So this is the first thing they tried, okay? This worked. So they're like, oh, wait, we need to turn this resistor off. Then came PMOS. And they put it here. So when the PMOS is on, why it gets pulled up to VDD, yes? When the NMOS is on, why he gets pulled down to ground. And actually, it turns out, if I remember my basic semiconductor physics, it's easier to fab a PMOS, I think, in an NMOS well. So it's, I don't remember, right? But it's basically, historically, the RTL came first, then came, then actually came diode transistor logic. They tried diodes, okay? <laughs> Instead of this, they tried a diode in there. Didn't work very well, right? Then they're like, all right, we need to come with a new device, which is off when X equals one, one on when x equals uh, zero. CMOS came over, right? So let's quickly figure out what happens in the circuit. So to do that, let's look at x equals zero. So let's do this. Let me figure get the truth table out later. So for x equals zero, what's the circuit? For x equals one. So for x equals zero, is the PMOS on or off? The PMOS. On, so like that. What about the NMOS? Here's my Y. Huh? Off. So there it is. Okay, this is X equals zero. So what's the truth table? What does it look like? So what's Y? When X equals zero, what's Y? One, right? So Y gets pulled up to one. There is no current flowing here because the NMOS is off, right? This wasn't the problem. The problem was X equals one. So when x equals 1, what happens to the PMOS? Off, right? So PMOS turns off. This is what we wanted, right? The NMOS, what happens to the NMOS? On, right? The NMOS better not be floating, correct? So and then y gets pulled to ground. So again, we get the NOT gate. And again, I'm not going to draw the power supply. The VDD and ground, okay, I'll draw it once more. VDD and ground are implied, and that's the bubble, right? So this is that not bubble. Sometimes the not is just abbreviated as a bubble. If there was no bubble, that's what this is called, a bubble. Right? It's the term, term for it. If there was no bubble, it would become a buffer. But we're not talking about buffers yet. Okay. So is this clear? Okay, this is awesome, great. But then there is another thing which makes CMOS very popular. Right? So let's look at this example. So if any have questions, stop me. Right. 
Because if you don't have any questions, I'll assume you're understanding it and I'll keep going. Unless I look at you and I can figure out that you're not understanding and I'll start asking you questions to aid your understanding. So here is x1, x2. I'm not going to label these transistors. Okay, I mean you can. Now nah, why not? Let's label M1, M2, M3, M4. So the question is, what logic function does this CMOS circuit implement? Basically, he's asking for the truth table. So there are four possible combinations. Right? X1, X2, or 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Yes? So let's identify what's the first step. Identify the source and the drain. And what are what is this? Where is the source and the drain terminal of each transistor? So for the PMOS, where's the source terminal? VDD is a source terminal, right? So there's a current flowing here. There is also a current flowing here. What kind of circuit topology is this? What is this called? Huh? Somebody said it. It's parallel. These two transistors are hooked up in parallel. What about these two is? Series. Okay. So two currents coming in um, parallel. They add up and they go through here. But that's really not the our concern. In the sense, this is the source, and I can't put the P. It'll start getting dirty. The drain, that's the source, that's the drain. And for the NMOS, there is the drain, there is the source. And for this fellow, here is the drain, here is the source. But as you can see, the drains of the PMOS are connected to the drain of the NMOS. Okay? Just the way the topology works. PMOS is pull up, NMOS is pull down. Okay? What else do you notice about this? You can add another note. I'll put it in a different color. What do you, what do you notice about this? There's something else. Yeah, same inputs because that's the gate, but what else? Something else. There's something symmetrical about this circuit. What is it? So what do you notice about this? Which is also true here, but this is a very trivial case, so it didn't show up. Yeah, why is uh, output is hooked up to the drain? Okay. Ah, close, 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 close. So let's, uh, that was a good point made. Let's add that in and then go into the other one. So if you will, output is that drain, input is that gate. The input is kind of obvious, okay? So that, but then what do you notice about the parallel series? What do you notice about it? You don't notice anything? So what do you notice about the parallel and series? The PMOS is in series with the NMOS. That's right. But what I was looking for is the, if the PMOS is in parallel, the NMOS will be in series. So the next example is when these two will be in series, okay? But then these two will be in parallel. And that you can you will see a more complicated example. So PMOS is, this is the way it's called complementary. It's complement of NMOS. In terms of, so complement means in terms of series parallel. That's what I meant. Okay. That's exactly what you should notice from here. So if you will, so this in series implies, so it goes both ways, okay? This is in parallel. That's exactly what I want you to notice. And I screwed this up because this is in parallel. In this case, and this is in series. Okay? All right, now you should be able to start quickly identifying which transistor is on and which transistor is off. 
So when x is 0, y is 0. I mean, x1 is 0, x2 is 0. Which transistors are on and which transistors are off? PMOS is on, so what's y? 1. Correct? So there's a path, doesn't matter which way you go, to VDD. Y is 1. Correct? What about an x1 is 0, x2 is 1? This one is on, so what's y? 1. And you should be, you should check that there is no short from VDD to ground, right? Because when either of these, these are in C, so when one of these goes into Z, one of these is 0, one of these NMOS is turned off, correct? So it cuts off the path to ground, which is good. So in other words, it's 1, 1, 0, correct? So do you recall from last week? Like, do you remember this fellow? What was this? So what was the truth table for this? 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Yes? How is this guy related to this? Huh? It's a NAND gate or this fellow, Y. No. No. Okay, so what's, why not? What's the not of this? So what is this? Not AND. So what is it called? NAND. It's not NOR. Okay. It's NAND, right? So it's OR. It's NOT of AND. So you take an AND gate, you complement it, okay? You get X1, X2, Y, right? So the shorthand symbol for this is, is this clear? This is not a NOR. It's a NAND. Okay? So that's the shorthand symbol. NAND gate. Not of AND. Question? Well, because one of these PMOSs is on, right? So let's take this fellow. When X1 is 1, this PMOS is off. Open circuit. Correct? But X2 is 0, so this PMOS is on. Right? M2. So there's a path to VDD. So Y becomes 1. Correct? And there is no path to ground at the same time. Or you're screwed, right? Because you'll get a short. So something interesting, right? The CMOS technology leads to a NAND gate. It doesn't lead to an AND gate. It's just the way the technology works. That's why, and it turns out, so note that for minimal transistor count, that is, four uh, transistors, two NMOS, two PMOS, we get NAND. And correspondingly, as you will see, we'll get a NOR gate. And the reason why I write this is, you may have heard that a NAND and NOR are universal functions. That is, any Boolean function can be written in terms of NAND and NOR. And we'll talk about that later. But one of the reasons that push really came about is when they implemented these logic gates in CMOS, what popped out was NAND and NOR. Not, not AND. AND doesn't come out. To actually get an AND, you have to put a NOT gate at the output. There, there's no other way. Right? So you need two more transistors. It's not minimal. Yeah. All right. So let's look at another example. Example two. So what is the natural next example I'm going to do? So if I did this, what do you think I'm going to do next? Yeah, so put these in series, put this in parallel. So here it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I screwed this up because you could connect them together, but I don't want to. Because I wanted to make it a two input gate. VDD. Here's Y. Now we have the N masses. And this looks easy. It is. Okay. But you should practice this enough so you can draw this really quickly. Let me see if I can do a neater job of this. Okay. Here it is. So here is X1. And I can just drop this from here. 
here is x2. So now what kind of logic function do I get? Oh yeah, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So what do I get? So you just quickly think about this, right? You don't have to like, you can go through every possibility, but yeah. Yeah, that's because the only way Y will get pulled up to BDD is these are in series, right? They have to be on at the same time. There's no other way, correct? This is the only case when both the PMOSs are on, when both the inputs are zero, will Y become one, correct? For everything else, the moment one of the N MOSs turns on, Y gets pulled to ground because they're in parallel. Right. And you can do the source and the drain. Okay, let's just do this. Once again, ID. So here is the source of the PMOS, drain of the PMOS, source of the PMOS, drain of the PMOS. And you can see the drains and the sources are connected. I mean, sorry, the drains are connected to each other. The output is the drain. Okay. Okay. So basically, what we're dealing with now, let me just draw out the NOR gate. This is the OR gate. So the OR is, so let me just do the OR. We didn't cover this last time, but let's just cover it now. X1, X2, Y, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is 0, 1, 1, 1. So this is the logical OR. Remember I told you last time, though, do not treat this as a plus sign. It's not. It's just a symbol. Right? And when we will do... When we do binary addition, it will become clear from context we're not doing an OR. Okay. So the symbol for this fellow is, is this, like this, x1, x2, y. Okay. So, and then you can see that this is the OR, but with a NOT. Okay. So this is the NOR. If you want x1, x2, y, the logical expression for this is x1 or x2, the whole complement, not, okay? Or sometimes people also use this symbol, okay? So there it is. It's the not of or. You take this and you not the output, 1, 0, 0, 0, you get that, okay? Okay, I just thought about your next extra credit. So here it is. I'll tell you, I'll just give you an idea of what it is. There's one function. Remember, how many possible two input functions can you have? Two input logic functions. How many possibilities? 16. So we covered like two. Right? It's 14 more. There's one interesting function. Can you tell me what it is? If so, it's the exclusive war. Okay. So this is a very special function. This is the symbol for it. Sorry, that's the ex math expression for it. The symbol is right here. It's kind of like the OR, but not quite. Okay. So it's like book. It's almost the OR symbol, but there's a little curve here. So it's called XOR or exclusive OR. Why is it called exclusive OR? Yes, it's A or B, but not both. It's exactly how you read it. And this is like very advanced. This is not the extra credit. Right? The extra credit is for you to implement exclusive war. And I'll put this online next Monday. You have an entire break to think about it. To implement the exclusive war using minimal number of transistors. Minimal number. Okay. The reason why I say it is, let's say I don't, I don't want to like... Um, so I'll just put a star on this. I'll just separate this out. I don't want to use this symbol. Okay. I don't know. I can. Question is, can I and we'll revisit exclusive war again and again and again. Right. Have you heard of neural networks? Or of like neural networks? So if you haven't heard about it, look it up. So what happened with the neural networks? They're really popular. They're starting to gain popularity in the 70s. But there is one function which a perceptron, which is a kind of neural network with the simple neural network, cannot remember. Okay. Neural networks are like, they're models of neurons. They can be used for uh, pattern recognition, etc., etc. Okay. 
Can you guess what that function is? There is one function which the neural network can, which the perceptron, not any neural network, but the perceptron particularly, cannot remember. What, can you guess what that function is? It excludes a war, right? And the reason is very simple, right? And we'll see, we'll shortly see why the exclusive war is important. So let's say, let's play a little game, right? We have time, that's why I'm digressing a little bit. Um, to do, so I want you, so here is a coordinate system 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, so 0, y is 1, and 1, 1. Okay? So these are the four corners of a square. Right? I'm going to place little balls here. Okay, like this wink. I want you to color this ball black if the corresponding output of the logic function is 1. Okay? So for the exclusive war, which balls are colored black? So this is exclusive war. Agreed? Now, I want you to draw a straight line. Only a straight line, not a curve. So you separate out the black balls from the white ones. So the black balls are on one side of the straight line. The white balls are on the other side. Can you do that? No. That's why the perceptron cannot remember this function. It's not linearly separable. The other functions are. So this was a very big blow to like neural networks. I mean, they recovered from it, but Perceptron is the simplest neural network. You can't remember the exclusive war. That's the way it works. So exclusive war is not linearly separable. Okay. And I can. I'm running out of room. So linearly separable means, well, can you draw a straight line that separates out the function? You just can't. But a couple of other points. Point number one, going back, I, I don't like this symbol. Right? Going back to what somebody said, it's a x1 or x2, but not both. Okay, So the output is 1 only when either of these are 1. Okay? If both of these are equal, the output is 0. Can you tell me a Boolean expression for it? Like instead of using this symbol, can you tell it to me in terms of not and or? I claim you can. So it's A or B, I mean it's X1 or X2, but not both. So translate that into logic. So how would you do that? Okay, hold on, hold on. So is it clear what he's saying? X1 not X2, okay, or... So this function is 1 when this is true or this is true, correct? Which row of the truth table does this expression become a 1? Which row? Second row, right? This so this corresponds to this. And we'll cover this again, but the exclusive war is a very nice example, okay? This is called as a min term. That's where the term comes from, right? So you see that how it's like that's... You can easily write, I mean, once I, we'll do more and more examples of this in week three, but just to give you a preview. Once I mentioned that how the exclusive war is, or someone else mentioned how the exclusive war is defined, do you see how you can get this from the truth table? Okay. So you can ask, hey, can I get an expression based on zeros in the truth table? Yes, you can. Right. But we'll do that later. Okay, this is all fine and dandy. What about a three input exclusive? I mean, is the exclusive or function useful? Now it's x2, x1, x0, y, 0, 0, 0. Suppose I tell you the exclusive or is associative, okay? Because you can take the exclusive or of x1, x0, and then exclusive or with x2 to get the output. So what is the three input exclusive war? Let's say I tell you that you could do this. Because you can do this first and then exclusive war it with x2. Let's say how much time we have. Oh, we 
Punya time. But I'm just looking at this, right? Uh, can you, can you see a, it's hard to see a pattern from here. If you have never seen this before and you can see the pattern, that means you you really understand what's going on. So how do what's the three input? Yep. Zero one. Zero. Okay. So that you can quickly apply, right? You know the exclusive order of this is right here. Exclusive order of zero just gives you this, correct? Actually, no, it doesn't just give you this, but if you apply it, you get it. Now what about this fellow? One, this, one. Be careful. One exclusive order with one is zero. Zero exclusive order with one is one. Okay? All right? Can you spot a pattern? Yeah, what is the pattern? Huh? All the what? Correct. So this is so this is opposite of this, but I want you to spot a pattern with respect to the input. Okay, so what can you tell me about ones and so exclusive or counts the odd number of ones in the input. So exclusive or is one only if there is an odd number of ones in the input. Okay. You use this, you could use this for parity. Have you heard of parity or error checking? It's a term in computer science. But the problem with exclusive war is, as you will see from your extra credit, it's hard to implement in reality. Okay. But with FPGAs, all that is going away, like we just specified as a two table, whatever. But exclusive war is a very interesting function. However, this, I mean, this, your extra credit is based off of physically realizing this using transistors. But besides that, I, I want you to, let's take a look at this. And this is where we'll end this lecture. This and let's do another example. This is example two. Example three. Or before this was example two. So example three is implement the following function in CMOS logic. Okay? So I want to do F is some function x1 not or x2 not and x3 not okay so i think this is for those of you who have the third edition of the book this is example 3 1 on page 90 so if you have the book you can look at it and obviously i'll put this in red use minimum number of transistors nope and you'll see it's not that hard Okay, I can't tell you what the minimum number of transistors is. That was the question. But once you do one of these, it kind of becomes obvious, except for that exclusive war. Okay. All right. So the way you look at this is you say, can I directly translate this into either? So the solution is this. It's very simple. It's only one step. Can you ask this question? Can we translate this? Is, let's call this equation one. Equation one into either a PMOS or NMOS network. This is the question you ask. The reason is it's CMOS. Yes. So once you get the PMOS, the NMOS is easy. It's the complement of the PMOS. Or if you get the NMOS, the PMOS is easy, right? So the question is, which network does that lead to? And now we have to know that the PMOS is on when the input is uh, zero, and the NMOS is on when the input is a one. Okay, right? Yeah. Okay, truth table is also fine. So, uh, so this is the question you're going to ask. Question one, if you will, Q one. Q2, you can also do a truth table. So the truth table is, oh, your book uses 3, 2, and 1. I don't like this. Whatever, here's F. There are, and actually, doing the truth table might help in the sense you'll probably, how much time do I have? Five minutes. 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. missing something. No, I'm not. 
Yeah? Let me zoom out. There is our expression. Okay? So let me do one entry and then we'll call it a day. Like you try it and we'll revisit it uh, whenever our next lecture is. Okay? I think Wednesday. But anyway. So, when is, so looking, what, so as we fill out the truth table, what you should do is you should start thinking about patterns. Okay? You shouldn't blindly fill in the truth table. In the sense, you should ask yourself, uh, can I, as I'm filling the truth table, can I get the circuit topology? Yeah. So, when x1, for example, is 0, okay, what is x1 not? 1. Now, these are the patterns you should start spotting. And we'll get into this later next week. But 1 or anything is 1. Okay? When you can... If you think about it, this is 1 or whatever this, exp this expression can either be 0 or 1, right? Correct? So, this entire expression will become a 1 whenever x1 is a 0. Is that clear? So, when x1 is 0, over here, how about this? If you're confused, add another column. Let me use a different color. Add x1 not. Okay? Oops. Can change colors. Add an x1 not, right? So what is x1 not? 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, okay? So what we're actually doing is what is called laws of Boolean algebra. Again, we'll revisit it next week, but it's not that difficult, right? So if you just think about it. So f is, uh, let me, um, x1 not, so it's blue, or x2 naught, x3 naught, but the point is, whenever this fellow is a 1, correct, 1 or 0, this is either 0 or 1, correct, it's always 1, so this is going to be 1, that's going to be 1, that's going to be 1, that's going to be 1, correct, but does this give you a hint as to what the question is actually asking, CMOS logic, so what network gives you a 1 in CMOS, which one gives you a 1? PMOS, okay? So, can you tell me, like, how do you come up with a PMOS transistor? Like, how do you hook up a PMOS transistor so it's actually true? And my thing just crashed, I think. So, yeah. We'll continue this next time. So, in the sense, that's where I wanted to stop. So, just think about it, right? And we'll answer this question, and then we'll get into... This is actually not the most difficult part of the course. This is, we'll do a couple of more examples. And then we'll get into your lab concept, which is basically MOS analog models. We're done.